Thank you all for coming out. Um, it started raining when I was coming in, and I know how crowds can be impacted. We have certainly a good showing tonight in the Western District. Many of you were with us last week as we facilitated in this, actually here at Douglas uh, Cabinet in the community um, for District 7. Tonight we're also joined, they weren't with us last week, but they're with us this week, uh, students from Coppin State University. Raise your hand. All right, these are students from the social work uh, program. There's a young lady in the back that said she has a minor in psychology. Thank you. Thank you. Minor in psychology. Tonight, I'm going to introduce a community leader. Many of you will know her face. Um, those of you who do not know her, you will know her. Uh, before you leave tonight. She's a community organizer. She's passionate about Baltimore and passionate about the Western District. I won't say who she is, but I'll just tell you that I'll be introducing her. I will pre be presenting Councilman Mosby. Oh, just wanted to give a shout out to Mr. Cherry from the Baltimore, I think I saw it, didn't I see him? From the, yes he is, okay, Fraternal Order of Police of Baltimore. There he is, Councilman Nick Mosby, won't you? Put your hands together. <clears throat> Councilman Mosby, good to see you. No, you're good. I'm, I'm going to have everyone come up. Good to see you, sir. <laughs> so, as I said, we're about to get started. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for uh, respecting the time and respecting everyone's space. Um, we're going to be orderly tonight. This is a civil engagement. Um, many of you, well everyone who raised their hand is from the Western District. Madam Mayor, Madam, good to see you Madam Mayor. Why don't you put your hands together and welcome Madam Mayor Rawlings Blake. Commissioner Anthony Batts. And as I said, in just a moment, I will be introducing Councilman Nick Mosby, but I would like to also acknowledge the presence of another councilman, a uh, hard worker in the city of Baltimore, Councilman Brandon Scott. And I'll take it upon, you know, I'll take the privilege, Councilman Scott, to uh, acknowledge the presence of your mom, the lovely Mrs. Scott, who's joining with us. <laughs> Neighbors and friends, as promised, just a few weeks ago, uh, Madam Mayor hosted a teleconference uh, joined by stakeholders around the city, citywide, representing the various, actually, actually representing the nine district, nine police districts in the city. And what she started talking about was engaging the community, getting input, and sharing with those on the call her desire to lay out a comprehensive outreach plan where you, the residents of the city of Baltimore, have an opportunity to sit with her and talk about your concerns as it relates to public safety. After that phone call, as promised, that Saturday, Madam Mayor stood in this district at Druid Hill Park, surrounded by community leaders, clergy, and friends, and talked about her plan to host nine public safety forums throughout the city. That following Wednesday, she was here in the seventh district, joined by Councilman Nick Mosby at this very institution, and she hosted her cabinet in the community. And so tonight, 
I would like to congratulate you, the Western District, residents of the Western District. Many of you we met during canvassing opportunities on Saturdays where we walked with the mayor and the commissioner, knocked on some of your doors, invited you to come out tonight, invited your input to talk about what the concerns are on your heart, what the concerns are in your household. And so tonight, we're here for the first of a series of nine public safety forums. Before I introduce the young lady I'm about to bring up, I just would like to, again, congratulate you for this is an opportunity for you, the Western District, to set the standard of what a public safety forum should look like throughout the city of Baltimore. It is no small thing that the mayor chose to be here tonight with you before she goes throughout the rest of the city. So you should give yourselves a round of applause. The young lady I'm about to introduce to you joined Mayor Rawlings Blake on that nice Saturday morning as we stood at George Hill Park and talked about these public safety forums. She's president of the Western District uh, Citizens, Relations, Citizens Review Council, Community Relations Council for the Western District. Her name is President Inez Rock. I just want to say first and foremost, thank you for coming out. And of course, it would have to rain, but we're here anyhow. And I just want to say thank you, Mayor, for walking with us and making us number one, the first group to be, to share our concerns and issues. And Commissioner Bax, thank you also. They walked with me and with some more community leaders and we learned some things and we invited people to come out tonight. And of course, you're always invited to the Community Relations Council meeting. They are the third Thursday of every month at Western District Police Council. It's for everyone, churches, schools, libraries, residents, businesses, we all are here to help make Baltimore, Western District and Baltimore City a better place to live, to work, and to play. Also, I just want to say uh, that we're here tonight to share our concerns and issues, but also with that, we're going to be respectful of each other. We're not here as a bashing thing. We're here to learn and to grow and to share. And also, let's talk about creating what our next steps will be. With that, I just want to say thank you again for coming out. Next up, I would like to present to you your council representative, uh, certainly not a stranger to you, and that is none other than Councilman Nick Mosby. Good evening, everyone. Come on, we can do better than that. This is West Baltimore, this is the 7th District. Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to stand here in front of you, um, and I'm excited that the mayor and the police commissioner decided to pick our home as the first stop to show the city that at the end of the day, when we talk about City Hall, when we talk about the mayor, we talk about the city council president, we talk about our city council rep, the most important, we talk about our police commissioner, the most important entity is the community. And it's the community from the standpoint of what you see, what you hear, and what you're around on a daily basis. And outside of the CRC meetings, this is another opportunity for you to air out your concerns. The one thing I told to folks last week when we were able to have the cabinet and the community here at this institution is that we want to talk about specifics. We want to talk about details. 
because it's those specifics and those details that we can drive to see if those objectives were achieved. We will not do this overnight. Um, when we look at the issues that plague our city, when we look at the issues that plague some of our corners and our streets and our neighborhoods in West Baltimore, we understand and know it's about creating sustainability. It's about creating growth. And like I said, that will not occur overnight and it will not occur without you. So first and foremost, I would like to just once again give a huge round of applause for Ms. Inez Robb, which I would say <laughs> might be one of the strongest community organizers, one of the strongest folks in the street that let all of us know in City Hall and at the uh, police commissioner um, the critical importance. And she doesn't, she doesn't go to sleep on it. She doesn't take it easy. She specifically lays out all the issues and she puts it right into your face. And I truly respect that and truly appreciate that. The one thing I would like to see is I see this room packed. I would like to see the Western District pack at her next meeting. Because that's the time when you have the ability to reach and touch your major, reach and touch the guys that are, and the men and women that are out there on a daily basis fighting to keep our streets safe and clean. So I would just like to say once again, thank you for coming out tonight. Let's not let this be the end, let this be the beginning. And I hope to see everyone at the next Western District Community Council meeting. Thank you. And now it is my honor and privilege to present to you uh, our mayor, Mayor Rawlings Blake. Thank you very much, Gus. Good evening, everyone. I am so grateful that all of you have come out this evening. I want to uh, first thank uh, everyone here at Douglas for their hospitality. This is twice in two weeks we've been here in Douglas uh, to uh, have conversations with the community. I'm very, very grateful that they are a school that understands that uh, you know schools are assets and community meeting places, and they've opened themselves up again. So can we give them uh, here at Douglas a big round of applause? Thank you so much. Again, I want to thank all of the residents who have come out. And I hope there's one or two of you who have that are here today because we knocked on your door and gave you the information. Maybe one or two. I see somebody shaking their head. Yes. Thank you. And I want to thank Ms. Inez Robb. You do such a fantastic job. You believe in partnership. And you do more than want better, you're willing to work for better. And I'm so grateful for you and your continued commitment for this, uh, to the city. Uh, I want to acknowledge a few individuals who are here on behalf of City Council President Jack Young. We have Tom Phillips, who is here. And I also thank you very much for being here on behalf of the Council President. And I also want to thank Councilman Mosby, who is here with his lovely family. He's been a tremendous partner. He was out there knocking on doors with us. And I also want to thank uh, Councilman Brandon Scott, who is here with his mother. I wish you'd bring your mother to work with you every day. She's been great. We had, some good, we had a good time today. And, and Councilman uh, Scott and Councilman Mosby have, have really uh, taken the lead on the council when it comes to collaborating for a safer Baltimore uh, with the public safety marches they've done and the ones that they continue to do, I'm just, I just want to make sure you know how grateful I am for uh, your collaboration. And I want to thank uh, Commissioner Batts uh, for his hard work and for uh, his entire team. And I want to thank uh, your, the, fire, the not the firefighters, the uh, FOP President Bob Cherry, who was here as a representative of the, the members. And I want to say happy birthday and thank you to Rick Hoffman from the firefighters for being here today. Um, we talked uh, last week after we canvassed, and the same day we canvassed that evening, there was a fatal fire on one of the blocks that we canvassed. And it just underscored the need for us to uh, work together as a public safety unit, fire and police. And I hope you, um, if you don't have a uh, working smoke detector, that you take time. One day, you know you're going to be in the house for a couple of hours. Just call 311. Within two hours, they'll come in. They'll, they'll do a CO reading. They'll do a, a fire safety inspection. And they'll put up for free uh, as many smoke detectors that they believe your home requires to be safe. Again, for free, they'll install it, and they are installed with a 10-year battery. So, uh, you know, twice a year, you won't be uh, in the position of trying to find somebody to get up on a ladder and change the battery because you get sick and tired of that beeping. So I want to just thank you, um, Rick, for, for being here, and Cherry as well. 
So the cornerstone of our crime fighting strategy is focusing on targeting repeat violent offenders. We are working to make our police force more nimble and technologically savvy so that we can be proactive and remove these criminals from the streets before they can commit violent crime. In my State of the City address, I announced that we would be bringing Operation Ceasefire to Baltimore as a part of our effort to com uh, combat violent crime. This will supplement our efforts at focusing on the most violent repeat offenders. And over the past several weeks, am I ahead of the, yep, over the past several weeks, my administration has been working very closely to get the program up and running. Operation Ceasefire has shown great promise in reducing homicides in several other big cities, and I'm confident that it will supplement our efforts here in Baltimore to make our city safer. Today, we announced LeVar Michaels will be heading up our ceasefire operations. Did I see LeVar in here? Did I see him, see him, see him? I know he was with us. We have some of our people from the Mayor's Office of uh, Criminal Justice, so you can wave your hands over there. But we announced him earlier uh, today, heading up our ceasefire operations. And Operation Ceasefire will continue our all-hands-on-deck approach to fighting crime in the city. This must be a collaborative effort across several agencies in my administration as well as law enforcement partners at all levels of government. And it requires a partnership with the community as well. Last year we saw a 300% increase in residents calling in to report tips to the police. That is critically important. And my goal is to increase that partnership between the police and the community so we can continue to work together to reduce violence in our community. In order to supplement or, or really create the incentive and, and, and drive uh, more um, information to those lines, my administration has increased support for Crime Stoppers. The number is listed on the flyers that we uh, sent around and the number on the flyers we have out there uh, that we use to promote this forum. Please, if you have information that could help to solve a crime, or prevent one from taking place, we urge you to speak up and work with us to reduce violence. We're making this announcement tonight for how you can leave a tip for police to follow up on here in the district. Again, I think it, they have it up there. Uh, we'll make sure that we get that uh, information out to you so you can have the information for Metro uh, Crime Stoppers. And with that, I will turn it over to Commissioner Batch. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, please forgive me, my voice is going in and out, so I apologize. Uh, I will be brief and succinct uh, to get to the, the juicy part of what we came here for, which is to listen to the community and provide answers uh, and insight. But before I get started, what I have to do, and I'd, I would be uh, um, bad and, and uh, punished if I didn't do this, I'd like my uh, command staff uh, to stand and introduce yourselves uh, one at a time and tell what you're in charge of, because they get the work done. Please give them a round of applause. Just yell, Daryl. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Daryl D'Souza. Um, I'm a colonel of the police department. I'm the chief of patrol. I oversee uh, the uniform officers and the officers in uh, marked patrol cars in the community.
Thank you guys uh, for being here. Very quickly to give you an overview of some of the things that are going on within our organization. A lot of uh, good changes, a lot of good progress that's taken place. One of the highlights that uh, you've seen within the news uh, recently is our expansion from move moving from four crime zones within our city to 17 crime zones. This is a new strategy for us, which seems to be working very well for the police organization. Uh, the credit for that goes uh, specifically to the hardworking men and women, uh, the street police officers that get the job done on a regular basis, who I'm extremely proud of. Uh, we've also started a professional standards accountability bureau. Deputy Commissioner Rodriguez will be coming in any minute now. Uh, what we're trying to do there is make sure that we have a professional police department, whether we're doing the academy or doing addressing uh, discipline. We're tying the two together to make a more professional police organization. One of the other things we're doing to address crime is to have an organization that moves very quickly with intelligence and information. Today, currently, we move very slowly with information and data that comes through, the, through our police organization. I sent most of the majors over the last couple of weeks to another police department to, to kind of get a, get a view for what I've been trying to share with them, what I've been telling them. I wanted them to see it, to touch it. And every one of them came back and said, we move very slow here as an organization. It's a difference from having a Pinto and a Porsche, and that's where we're going. We're going to increase uh, our automation, our technology, as the mayor said. Uh, she's investing heavily that we make a very fast-moving organization with information, which means that we have a more efficient police department that addresses crime in a more professional and faster way. Uh, in a, in a, also, I have to uh, send out um, a thank you to uh, Ms. Inez Robb also. Everybody's giving her uh, praises. Uh, Ms. Robb and the other CRC members uh, came inside the police organization over the last several weeks and sat on our promotional boards. So they sat there as uh, candidates were applying for majors, and uh, they kept asking questions about the community. The focus was on the community. Ms. Inez, did you hear me giving you accolades? Okay, all right. It was a good experience for not only the community, but also for the police department. Uh, for the questions that were asked by the community, they understand where my emphasis is. The emphasis here for this police department moving forward is focused on this community, listening to this community, becoming a part of our, our community. We uh, will continue to work with all parts of the community. We are establishing good partnerships with the NAACP. I'm very proud of that. I'm a lifetime member of the NAACP and, and have been for the vast majority of my career. So we're bringing them into the police department on multiple levels. We work in, we're working and establishing a, partment, a partnership with the ACLU. Uh, we have nothing to fear there. We think we do good work, and so we're coming together as a partnership to grow our police department. We work very well with the, the business community, and we'll continue to establish good uh, rapport with the business community as a whole. Uh, last week, we had an open house session where we opened up the police department, and we brought the community in. We had pretty close to about 300 people who came in to take a look at this organization, and all, everything that I'm trying to do is to peel that onion back and open this police department up, to get us outside, bring the community inside. We're also establishing what we're calling a citizen police academy. Uh, what we're going to do is over a four-week period on Wednesdays, we're going to invite the community in. If you want to learn about the police department, we're going to teach you everything to know about the police organization, whether it's internal affairs, whether it's use of force, anything that you want to know about the police department, we're going to open up and we're going to give you a certificate for completing this program so you learn what's going on. The mayor talked about our VRO program, our violent repeat offenders. That has been a mainstay of the organization and will continue. Not going after our community, not making mass arrests, not taking everybody that you see on, on the street corner uh, to jail, but the focus on those people who are causing harm to our community, those people who are taking human lives and hurting our, our children and our babies in there that uh, make our communities unsafe. We have Operation Ceasefire again, as the mayor said, which is a little different uh, take on things. A ceasefire deals with addressing groups. Now, you can call groups whatever you want to call them by their names. You can call them gangs. You can call them crews. You can call them neighborhood groups, whatever you want to call them. But organized entities that come out and cause pain within our community. Ceasefire is a program where we don't take on just the individual like the VROs. We take on the entire group. We bring the entire group to the table, and we make that group responsible for the entities within that group. And we tell them, basically, if anybody in your group does violence in this community, we're going after all of you, and we're going in a very strong measure. Uh, for my uh, good friends around the nation who I have as other chiefs of police, uh, Greg, uh, Gary McCarthy out of uh, Chicago, 
raves about the program. Ron Surface out of New Orleans raves about the program. Chuck Ramsey out of, out of Philadelphia raves about the program. I've, called, I've talked to all of them about the program, and they share the, the successes with it. Uh, we move on to share some of the improvements. Uh, the mayor shared the point that uh, people are calling, telling us about crime. And I think it's the movement that we have of opening this organization up. People understand that we care, and we're getting more information. We're getting more citizens uh, sharing information. And, uh, and another stat that I am extremely proud of, along the rest of them, is that we have a 35% reduction in citizen complaints, complaints against force, complaints against police officers, dramatically down. We're going in the right way. We can't declare victory. But we're making progress going in the right way to reform a police department that has a very rich tradition, a police department that has a very lot, a lot of good police officers and employees within it, but we have room to improve, and we will continue to go that direction. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner Batts. As we begin the Q&A session, I'm going to ask those of you who wish to ask a question, if you would begin making your way to the microphone in an orderly fashion. I will ask that as the person asks the question directed to Madam Mayor or to Commissioner Batts, that the rest of us will remain silent. Let me repeat that. Because we are here to respect one another's opportunity to speak, and we are here to respect everyone's time, it's, I have 7.45. I ask that when someone asks one question, because of the size of the crowd, I'm asking that everyone ask one question that the rest of us will remain quiet when the person is asking the question and we will remain quiet when either the mayor or the commissioner is responding to the question. How many questions are we asking? Thank you. And we will do what when one another is well, respect one another. Thank you very much. Now, when you ask the question, okay, it's fine. Thank you, Demetrius. Demetrius Melisham, who is the neighborhood liaison uh, for the Western District, Western and Northern, um, I will ask that you simply give us your name and then pose the question and an opportunity for the mayor or the commissioner to respond. Thank you very much. Demetrius. How you doing? My name is Tawanda Jones. I'm Tyrone West's sister. I am Tyrone West. And my question is, I just want to know what is being done about road cops, cops that constantly abuse the system and abuse their badge. You know, Nicholas Davis Chapman, Officer Ruiz, they brutally beat Abdul Salam. By the way, he's on the way here now. But they brutally beat him 17 days prior to my brother's brutal death. And I just don't feel safe in the city for no one. And I speak for everybody. Amen. And I just want to know what's being done. Amen. So thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. I know that we, we spoke uh, when I met with your family. And I expressed to you now and repeated that I take uh, the uh, concerns and complaints about police brutality very serious. Uh, we uh, dismantled uh, under uh, Commissioner Batts certain uh, enforcement uh, groups because we because we got complaints because of bad concerns and that's very serious. Uh, and we fully invested. So I even though that I take it serious and I express that to you and I can have uh, Commissioner Batts be uh, more specific to so that. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for the opportunity. I have to start by applauding the, the West family and the West group as a whole. Uh, they come to every meeting that we have. Anytime that I'm on the radio, uh, they call in. And I told them uh, I applaud the fact how much they care about their loved ones and they care about uh, the focus that they have. 
Well, I have that same passion when it comes to the police organization and every citizen and every resident within our city as a whole, because everybody is valuable here. Every life is valuable. What we're building here, and one of the things that the mayor told me when I came in is that she wanted me to work on reforming our police organization. She said uh, to stand tall and apply those police employees who do a good job, and there's many who do a good job, and not everyone is out there trying to hurt someone, but we, do, we are a cross-section of the community. We have, we have guys who do a good job very well, and we have uh, people who don't meet the standards. And part of what I did coming in here is building a professional standards uh, bureau focus at rooting out uh, cops who have, or police officers who have issues that are out there. And we're doing a, a good job of that. We're holding people accountable. Um, I've pushed people out of this organization. I've uh, held people accountable in this organization. I've reduced people in rank in this organization. And I make it very clear, I'm not here to play. I'm not here to play games. I'm here to, to reform this organization. We're not going to hide anything within our department. When we do something wrong, we'll, be, we'll hold ourselves accountable to the public and let them know. Same time, when the organization does well, I would also stand in front of these officers and share how they've done a good job. So we continue to hold this department accountable. We continue to hold officers very accountable. Just yesterday, I had uh, officers in front of me on discipline hearings addressing uh, misconduct, and I let them know very clearly, I won't tolerate police officers who hurt this community. I won't tolerate police officers who break the law. I have no, no love for any police officer that breaks the law because we're held to a higher standard. We'll continue along, along those ways. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Up next. Yes, um, my name is Diane Butler. I'm Tyrone West's mother. I have a question. You say you're targeting on repeat offenders. How can you target on repeat offenders when you don't clean your house first? All this madness that my family is going through has come from your house. You have repeat offenders. You have cops killing, murdering people. Clean your house first, and then we'll clean our streets. Amen. Another thing, to the FOP, Bob Church, it took me eight months, and it's still killing me. You had the audacity to get on television after they murdered my child and say, my officers did what they were trained to do. To kick, stop a man, mace him, tase him, beat the crap out of him. Is that what they're trained to do, Mr. FOP? Okay, I'm going to say right now, as we, Demetrius, give me one second, and we're going to go to the next question. To the next question. And certainly I respect the West family. But again, I respect the number of people who are standing in this line that would like to ask a question. Excuse me, sir. I think you answered the question. Thank you very much. So as I finish, thank you, uh, Commissioner. Again, we want to respect everyone's opportunity to ask the question, and we will give them an opportunity to answer the question. Ma'am, you'd like is, to introduce yourself? My name is Emma Anderson. I'm Time on West um, Aunt, and I have a question for Stephanie Blake's violence only. I'd like to know what took, why is it that you did not meet with us to say that, I'm sorry, we're going to check into this, we're going to see what happened to your nephew. I, we called you, I was in your face a couple of times, you just put your little people in front of you and just put us to the side. I, Take her name, take her name, take her name, I'll call. You never call. You never call. And when and you sit up here and you, talk, you tell these people that you met with the family. I didn't come because I felt like that was a slap in the face for you to come meet with our family after we had the meeting at the, um, no, downtown. City Hall, we had the, at the council, city council meeting. We had the city council meeting. Then after that, you decided you would meet with us to look good when you, when you could not meet with us when it counted. Officer Batts, I give him credit, even though I still don't. As long as I got Tyrone in my heart, I can never, ever truly trust the police. As long as I carry Tyrone, and I'm going to always carry Tyrone, so there's going to always be doubt. But Officer Batts has there's something about him. I don't know what it is, and I hope I'm not wrong. I normally judge people correctly, but I judged you. I really judged you because I voted for you. And you said to me, please don't say that. That's 
just what you said to me. And I did not come to the meeting with the rest of my family because of that was a downright disgrace for you not to meet with us or somebody meet with us because your department killed, murdered my nephew. Murdered. I still feel this in my heart. And no matter what you say now, after this, I don't know if I can even believe what you say because you will not be saying it from your heart to me like I'm saying it from my heart to you. Thank I'm you. Being truthful Thank about you. my Tyrone. He was everything to us. I know he was just another somebody that got out of jail, but he served his time. But he was everything to us, everything. And the only person on this police department that I got an ounce of trust in is Officer Bass. Everybody mm -hmm. else, and, and I don't even know about. Thank you again for your comment. Every time I comment. see you, it's a slap in the face, a slap in the face. Those of you who are standing in the line, thank you for your From patience. From your heart to my heart. From my heart to your heart, I made the offer to your family to sit down and meet. You've made it very clear right here no, that no. you don't trust me and you don't, you don't believe that I'm speaking from my heart. That is, I understand that. So it's, it is, a, I think, almost futile for us to have this conversation. I had a conversation with your family from their eyes to mine, from my heart to theirs. You were invited and you chose not to talk. Your hands were tied. You were forced to talk. Let us get to the next. Uh, thank you. And again, we're being respectful for the number of people who are standing. Good afternoon. My name is George Peoples, and I'm the uncle of Tyrone West. It took so long for any information to come out about his death. It took Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake five months or more before she could even address the family. She's the head of every agency in the city. It's incumbent upon her to be responsible for what's happening. Now, I applaud Commissioner Bats for his efforts in crime fighting throughout the city. His 80 point plan and his initiatives will finally somehow, some way, take effect. And with him bringing about the Independent Review Board of in custody deaths by police officers, I applaud that. However, I don't want that investigation to last as long as it took to get some type of unnecessary response for the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office. That independent review board must be complete, thorough, transparent, concise, and on time, Commissioner Batts. It's incumbent upon you to see that that's done, and it's also incumbent upon Mayor Stephanie Rollins Blake in order to bridge the ever widening gap that's between the community and the Baltimore City Police Department to step forward when any in custody deaths occur. Because we look at Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your one comment. moment. I'm gonna ask the question. I've given you the several question, moments. The Thank question you. is Demetrius, the question I'm asking is, you right now. Okay. Thank so you, to that question point and allow excuse me, sir, and allow the mayor to respond. To the thank you. I haven't thank answered you. your question. I want to thank respond you, sir. She's just to you, respond to my statements. I you took it upon questions. yourself to use your time, and you never asked your question. So I just want to reiterate something that I communicated I'm not with the family when I. This is no bashing. I, this is no. That's fine. This is I, no bashing by any means, mm -hmm. uh, Mayor. This is no bashing. It's not a matter of bashing. It's just a matter of us having a limited amount of time and Correct. many people. So if I could just speak very briefly. As I communicated when I sat down and met with your family, you all understand that this, the initial investigation was out of my control. I don't run any part of that investigation. And every part that I did control, I pushed. And when the state's attorney's office decided what they were going to do with the case, I immediately instructed Commissioner Batts 
to go forward with his own investigation. I'm pleased. I'm not going to change your mind, but I am pleased that you're, you're satisfied with Commissioner Babs, because that's what this is about, making sure that our community feels that they can trust our commissioner who's working in partnership for increased public safety, and that's what we're doing. I pushed forward. We've sat down. We've talked. The commissioners talked to you, many people from my staff. I instructed the commissioner to talk to you. He's met with you several times. Several members of my team have met with you, and I've met with you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Oh, Commissioner, sir. Uncle, Uncle George, you know I always have to come and shake your hand. You know, I always want to greet you and see you. It's good to see you. I thank you for your comments. You know, uh, part of uh, what's going on for the, the, the larger part of the community who may not know uh, all the parts is that, uh, unfortunately, within, within an arrest, Mr. Tyrone West lost his life during, during the arrest, and we don't have the entire story. Uh, what the coroner came out and did is they did an investigation. The coroner gave his his uh, perception uh, or his ruling and so did the state's attorney internally inside and when I say I don't know totally what happened is from my standpoint not from the public part of what I have to do is make an unbiased ruling on what took place out there what I have done to be very transparent I'm not going to try to hide anything what I said is that I'm going to be very open and I brought uh, experts in from around this region we have uh, experts who have done this before and the purpose of that and when I, I, I sat down to greet these experts I said one thing, the only thing I'm looking for you to do is tell the truth. I'm not looking for you to lean one side or the other. I want you to review all of the facts, everything that's possible, and tell the truth. Because at the conclusion, we want to go before the media, we want to stand at that podium, and I want you to share with the community exactly what you found and be honest about it. Now, if we did something that was wrong out there, then hold us accountable. And that's the responsibility to hold, hold us accountable, and I'll hold the police officers accountable. But if they did everything right out there, or most things right, then say that too. Either way, just tell the truth. If we need to correct this organization, if we need to improve the training in this organization, or if we need to hold people uh, accountable, criminally accountable, or administrative accountable, we will do that. But what we're looking to do is just tell the truth. So we're going to be open, we're going to be transparent, and we're going to move forward. Thank you, Commissioner. You've given an opportunity to say something. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We've been. Uh, we are. We are. Please respect. Please, we've been very respectful. Please be respectful of the under people. Please be respectful of the other people who have been in the Demetrius, line. before we had the next person not. speak, Absolutely let me not. let me clarify tonight for those of you who are with us. Again, thank you for coming. Uh, Marvin, it's good to see you, Madam Mayor. As you know, on Saturday we knocked on a lot of doors and a lot of folks who are with us tonight came out because we invited them. Uh, though there are some that are here to talk about Mr. West, and certainly we're all, uh, our hearts and condolences are with the family, there are still some of us who are here to talk about the other aspects of public safety. Is that right? Put your hands together and give me an applause if that's right. One of the persons that joined us on Saturday, we ran into uh, Madam Mayor, and I don't know if he's going to ask a question or not, and I don't hope he doesn't mind me acknowledging uh, him. And that's uh, on, on Saturday on North Avenue, uh, we ran into one of the constituents by the name of Mr. Melvin Williams. Uh, he was kind enough to join with us, as promised, and I just wanted to thank him for coming out. Um, sir, in the orange hat. Yes, sir. Your name and your question, sir. Yes, and again, sir. we're asking for questions because folks in the Western District are trying to get to the issues and, that we can resolve. And, Thank and you, I, sir. And I hope I could get to the issue. I'm listening to the mayor talk, and I'm listening to our plan, but I don't see where you invest in, in people in this city. I mean, unemployment is 25% in Baltimore City. Now... Now, that is a public safety issue. When you have city that's unemployed like this, that's a public safety issue. You know, I was unemployed not so long ago, but every time I leave my house, I see people that don't look like me working on my street or where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? And if we don't address that high unemployment, I don't care how many police you put in these areas, it won't stop. People gonna feed their families. Thanks a lot. 
Thank you very much for being, for being here. And thank you for your comment. And I agree. It's not, public safety is more than just police. And I invest in, significantly invest in workforce training through the Mayor's Office of Employment Development. One of the offices that focuses on reentry is right in Mondawmin Mall. I've increased uh, spending in that area. We've worked in partnerships. We've even uh, worked to expand opportunities. So through my executive order and with the support of the council, we made sure that every uh, contract that the city lets for more than $50,000 uh, has a requirement to, ha to uh, hire if they're going to hire anybody, that it's a Baltimore City resident first. And we work to make sure that they're meeting that requirement through uh, regulations through the Mayor's Office of Employment Development and in partnership with the council. I take it very seriously. That's why when you see the uh, jobs that I fought so hard for with the new casino, we fought for the jobs, then we fought to make change the, the law in Annapolis to allow more people to get access to those jobs. So even if you have a record, if it's after a certain amount of time, you, do, you are no longer disqualified from getting that job and we went we are on a 14 uh, district tour throughout the city bringing the the folks from the casino to each district in the city so we can make sure that everyone understands all of the opportunities that are coming the same thing with the with the jobs that are coming from Amazon we're working with them uh, through the mayor's office of employment development to make sure that those jobs are coming Un whether it's uh, an entry-level job like those or the tech jobs I'm a big proponent of uh, job development and working to make sure that we are matching Baltimore City residents with those opportunities I agree it's more than just having police on the street and I hope uh, that if you haven't heard about the work that we're doing, or if you don't know, or if you have a concern about the, the quality of service that we have at the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, that you share it with our staff people that are here so we can address it. But we do take our work uh, at the Mayor's Office of Employment Development very seriously, working to connect people with jobs. How will we Thank know you. if those jobs go to people in the city? How will we know, will you have some kind of website set up to let us know that those Sir, we're going to ask you to speak those, into the mic. You had one jobs, question, Demetrius. Hold the mic. And we're going to our next question. So, Ms. For that? so that's a follow-up yeah, question, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that. But this, if you follow up with Demetrius, he'll make sure that you understand the work that, that, that we're doing as well as how you can verify that it's being done. And I also want to thank Councilman Mose because he's worked very hard yes. with expanding opportunities for individuals from our, our community as well with his Ban the Box legislation. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leo Burroughs, Jr., and I'm chairperson of the Committee of Concerned Citizens. My question is multi-pronged but short, and that is to say, and I'm piggybacking on the previous uh, speaker, uh, do we understand, do you guys understand, ladies and gentlemen, the magnitude of the problem facing the unemployed and how that is interwoven into the fabric of crime and how it must be reduced. Briefly, housing, abandoned housing, could well be addressed with vo vocational education and home-based business emphasis. How do we match people's talents up with home-based businesses? And of course, lastly, the Housing Authority of Baltimore City is privatizing its, out, its uh, many thousands of units and we're going to have 200, more than 200 black maintenance people who put out of work as a result of that privatization. Are we going to address this concern with the same point of emphasis that we're, we are emphasizing on the presentation we've heard thus far? All well and good. And again, I should say I thank you for having this forum because having this forum is a response to the concerns that we have voiced for the last year about the need for the town hall meeting and interaction with the community. So in that regard, we, we're glad you're doing what you're doing. Thank you. With respect to the rental, the, um, the RAD uh, process, the federal government is making resources available to do the much needed uh, renovations and capital improvements to our public housing site. We don't want to leave that, ta that money on the table. So we are taking advantage of that program so that the people who live in public housing can live in quality, safe, affordable housing, subsidized housing. That's the first thing. With respect to the people who are in jeopardy or vulnerable to lose their job, my commitment to 
to them, to their union, to everyone, is to work very closely with each and every one of them, as the city has done in the past when we've shifted the way we do business to identify opportunities. First, if their choice is with the operator, it will be um, broaching that relationship with them. And then second, if it's not with that operator to look for other opportunities that we have within the city, but not to stop, to work with them and help work to get them placed in position. So I'm not, we're gonna take advantage of the capital funding and we're not gonna abandon those workers. With respect to blight and, and the, the um, vacant houses and the rehabilitation, um, my vacancy value initiative has increased the number of homes that have been demolished significantly in, increase the number of homes that are being rehabbed and increase the number of people who are buying homes in Baltimore because and shoring up vulnerable communities because of the incentives that are put in place. Uh, year over year, the, the numbers are clear, the initiative is working and we've gotten national and international acclaim for that program. And through some of our uh, partnerships with the Office of Sustainability, we're doing it in partnership with organizations that are teaching people how to deconstruct homes and working with the school system to see if there are ways that we can partner with those um, the, the tech schools to give kid, young people the, the skills that they need. But it has to be in the right setting. Many of these homes are not, um, they are not safe enough for our kids to be in and doing that work. So we're working to find those opportunities. I believe that that is, that is worth pursuing and we are pursuing that. With respect to what uh, my commitment and my understanding about unemployment, unemployment is a serious problem. And even those of us who have jobs are one paycheck or two paycheck away from being in significant difficulty. So we have an issue in our country of income disparity that I take very seriously. And that's why I fight so hard to, for the jobs that we have in Baltimore. That's why I fight so hard in partnership with, my, uh, the, with other elected officials to make sure that the money that we are spending, the taxpayer money that we are spending to do the work of the city, that more Baltimore City residents have those opportunities. And I will continue to fight for those opportunities as well as the work that I'm doing with, uh, in partnership with, the, with our schools to make sure that when our kids graduate from schools that they're ready. They're ready for college if that is their choice, they're ready for career if that is their choice, and more importantly, they're ready for life. So these are things that I take very seriously and I have a track record of working very hard in all of those areas, sir. And thank you for coming. Yes, uh, if, I'm gonna ask you a question, but I, I, I really I like to say this before I, before I make my statement, my question. I see you doing everything to take black to take jobs from black people. You keep using this terminology, uh, citizens of Baltimore. Well, they got citizens of Baltimore just working, and most of them seem to be Spanish. You know, so I, I, I mean, this this citizens of Baltimore thing, this citizens of Baltimore statement that you made, uh, it's just a broad statement. It doesn't cover what we trying to cover in our community. Black people are out of jobs. We're not concerned. Citizens of Baltimore. I don't understand what that means. You know. That, that could be anybody, you know, but, you know, the affirmative action specifically uh, gives us numbers on how many people should be on certain jobs. And I don't see that happening here. Matter of fact, you're taking jobs from black people, you're outsourcing, you're privatizing. Uh, look at the school system. Uh, you know, the custodians have been laid off and given the jobs to the Spanish people. So you don't really, you know, you and the rest question. of these young black, okay, my question is this. Uh, my question is this, to the police officer. I spoke to you before, and I asked you some questions about this stop, search, and seizure type thing. You said you were going to stop it. You were going to, uh, and, and you, you were going to uh, direct your officers to stop people that you see with bulges. You know, if they had a bulge, they were going to be stopped, but just stopping people. Now, I haven't seen that implemented, but all I see is a continuation of stop young blacks that's doing absolutely nothing but walking down the street, you know, no, no, not stopping any white people, you know. And it seems as though, I, I don't know how this was done, but it seems as though our black elected officials, be it city, state, or, or federal government, like Obama, seems as though they've been brainwashed to turn their backs on black people. And your you know, question and I, is? I'm, I'm, I'm just having a problem with this. I'm asking you, the police officers that committed that crime on Anderson and West, are they still on the force? Thank are you. they still in the street? Yes. You want me to answer? You're answering it for me. Let me let me share with you along these lines. <clears throat> uh, 
I think what I, what I share with you is the fact when we talked is that uh, I didn't break the things that are here. I didn't break them. I haven't been here, but part of my job and responsibility is to try to do my best to fix them and repair them. And part of that starts, are you, are you, allow, are you allowing me to finish my conversation? I, I listen to you, so just give me the, resp the, res the same respect, okay? And so part of that is changing uh, the direction of this organization. As part of it is changing the culture of the police organization. And so part of what we're doing, and it's not going to take, take place overnight, but you asked me if I'm holding people accountable. It's basically what you're getting to. And the answer to that, the answer to that is yes. That attack Wes and Anderson, are they still the police officers the who force? are the police officers who were involved in the yeah. Tyrone West case are going through the process right now of looking at the investigation. That's part of bringing the are independent they still board on. The on. They're on the street until we have a resolution. What's going? Is that is that well, well, proving well, a point well, or something? Time when police have a problem, you take them off the street and put them on a desk job. They are, they are on the a desk job. Are still on the street. No, fact, they are not on the street. Fact, they've committed they are crime. not on the street, sir. And they've taxed more people. Thank you, sir. They have taxed more people. And you thank you for your question, sir. And, Commissioner, thank you for answering the question. Good evening, Mayor and Commissioner. I'd like to know, when are y'all going to hold the police as responsible for coming in the black community and just disrespecting everybody? The older people, the younger people, everybody. They do whatever they want to us. Thank you for your question, sir. I'll, I'll say, when yeah, I interviewed the for the commissioner position, that is something that I spoke about with Commissioner Batts and every person I interviewed. I heard you, not specifically you, but the concerns that you have and the concerns that were raised by other community members when I talked to community leaders prior to bringing Commissioner Batts in. I heard you loud and clear that you cannot expect us to work with you in partnership to reduce crime in the city if you tr continue to disrespect us. That is one of the reasons why I brought Commissioner Batts here, because we wanted to change that paradigm, and we've worked very hard to try to shift that. That's why we're here tonight. We, wanted, we want you to know that we're working to try to improve the relationship. That's why we're here. That, is my, that was my instruction to Commissioner and to everyone that works under him that we need to treat the people of Baltimore the way that you would want your family treated. And that is the only way that we're going to get the collaboration and the cooperation that is, going to, that is going to get us to a safer Baltimore. I just want to know when it's going to stop. It's been forever. That's Demetrius, one question. one question. One question. Next, next. What we're doing through our procedures, our practices, our education, our discipline, is building a professional police department that you're going to be proud of. It's not going to happen overnight. There's a lot of good employees in this organization. i got to make that really clear to you. You know, I was at a meeting not too long ago, and I was sharing, sharing with the police officers, and I was sharing with uh, the residents uh, in the Southwest that what I want people to walk away with when they come in contact with the police officers is not the things that you're seeing here tonight. What I want them to walk away with is, wow, they did a very good job, and they went beyond what they had to do to get the job done and to serve this community. And as I was saying that, one lady took the microphone and she says, I just want to share with you my story as you say that. And I thought it was going to be a, neg a negative retort uh, that she was going to say, but she stood up and she said, you know, I was driving my car and I took an overabundance of my medication, not on purpose, it was an accident, and I started to swerve as, as I was driving. And I ended up coming into a stop and stopping my car and a police officer pulled me over. And she shared the fact that when that police officer got out, she thought for sure she was going to jail because she, she was driving under influence. And what she said is that a police officer came, to, up, came up to her in a very kind and respectful way, helped her out of the car, put her in his car, and drove her home. And she walked away with saying, wow, thank you very much. There's a number of police officers in this organization uh, that mentor young kids uh, in this organization, in this community. There's, they mentor kids who don't look like them. There's police officers in, in this organization who are Caucasian, who live in black neighborhoods within this city. You don't know them, but they're part of the community and part of the churches. So we can't paint everybody with a broad brush, but the thing that I walk away with, and I'm listening and I'm paying attention, the way that we treat people in, this, in, in our city, the community doesn't like. And that comes from some of the things that we say and some of the attitudes that we give off. I hear that, I'm paying attention, paying attention and I'm listening. I'm bringing in outside trainers to this organization, I'm opening up the organization to the community so the police department understands their responsibility. We work for you. You pay our salaries. And I don't care what part of the city you come from. I don't care how much money you make. I expect these officers 
to treat everyone in this community with respect. And I won't back off of that. I won't stop saying that, and I won't stop holding people accountable for it. But there again, I've been here about a year. This thing didn't get broken over a year. It's going to take time, and we're going to keep moving in the right direction. I do, I do need your help. I do need you to keep me in check. I do need you to hold me accountable. But I also want to applaud when we, we go the right way and we're doing the right things that you want to see from this organization. We're moving in the right direction. Thank you, sir. And before we go to the next question, I'm going to ask that we, because there are folks that have been standing for some time now, I know Leela, you're in, uh, on the end from a step forward. She wants to ask a question, Mr. Bilal. So there are a number of people who are in the line. I'm going to ask that we ask three questions. Three folks ask a question, then we'll give an opportunity for a response, then we'll go to the next three, ask a question, opportunity for the response. Thank you very much. And I'm going to also ask because there are some folks who have been sending me texts from the audience asking, are these people from the Western District? Well, I should hope, but there are a lot of folks from the Western District who would like to have, they're standing in the line, who would like to have their question answered. So the first three, just give us your name, neighborhood, organization, your question, and we can go on to the next three. Thank you. Thank you, Demetrius. Okay, my name is Nakia, and I'm from 21211 um, off of Falls Road. And um, you say that you want to have a community relationship, and we pay the officer's salary. So I want to know why do I have to pay the officer's salary of Jethro Estavion, who murdered George Booker Wells III and shot him six times? I want to know why do I have to pay that salary on that officer and he has not been arrested. What part of the job is shooting someone six times? Can I hold the mic? I feel, I feel no, ma'am. That's his job. Hi. To hold okay. The mic. Thank Hi. you. My name is Ms. Pat, and I'm the Heart of Philly Community Liaison. I didn't come to bash anybody, I come to say to you, Mayor. I'm here to help you. The motorcycle community is here. Captain, Douglas, thank you. Bass, let me tell y'all something. I'm out of Philly, but Baltimore is my home. I use drugs here. I was one of the ones who made crime real bad. But I'm coming back to give back what was taken from you to give back to you. And like I know, just like y'all know, we spend a lot of tax money in the city when somebody gets shot know who shot them, don't tell, and then that's when the detectives come, all that money is gone. You talk about the wrecks of clothes. Your question, Ms. Pat. Wait a minute, my question is, we need to give you guys at City Hall respect. For us to give us respect, we need to take back our own neighborhood. Where I live, I'm not gonna call the police because I got a problem. I'm gonna handle my problem, then I'm gonna call the police to take care of the problem that we just gave you. We got to get back. I'm talking to the people. Thank you, Ms. We got to get, don't cut me, y'all, please. I'm sorry. And I know I'm out of order. I'm not but we got to start taking back. We got to take sure. back our own city. The police here to get back. We need to take back. Don't be afraid for your city where you live, you pay mortgage, and you let somebody take over your neighborhood. Get Thank together you, as a Pat. community and work. The motorcycles is coming back from New Jersey to Canada, here to Baltimore, and we're gonna help you, Thank you do something to make a difference. So I'm asking for the police department, do what you gotta do, do your job, and just help one another. And we need to get a communication where we know what cop is this and who he is. Thank we you. Have one you know more what I mean? Don't be mad at me, but that's what we gotta make a change. If you wanna stop this crime, we gotta fight with each other, not against each other. Excuse me, thank you. Thank Excuse you very me. much. Demetrius, one second. So that's two of the first three questions, which you in a second, Shorty. That's his name. I'm not giving him his name. That's what he's known as. We are not going to hijack the microphone. We're not hijacking the microphone. We're going to give everyone an opportunity to pose their question. This is not to you, sir. This is to everyone. Because we have folks who have been standing in the line for some time now. Right, Demetrius, name, thank you, sir. My name Dwayne Shorty Davis. Uh, I'm famous in Baltimore for putting toilets out on the corners of exposing political figures. Uh, my question is to Commissioner Batten, Stephanie Rollins Blake, the mayor. I gave you a letter about a half an hour ago, all right? 
and that letter states that y'all had evidence pertaining to a case that I was involved in. Your police department came in my house without a search warrant, putting guns to my head, threatening me because I was, I'm a caterer. I've been in a lot of people's houses. I was making a movie and a documentary about the politics in the state of Maryland. My question is, what you gonna do about the evidence that I gave your police department when I was asking protection from your police department from political figures here in Baltimore City? Stephanie Rollins Blank know me, you know me for 14 years, Larry Young know me, Doc Cheatham know me, and y'all know what I've been doing with this camera. I want my property back, and the police department got it, so what you gonna do about returning my property? And I brung ceasefire here in 2006, when you were a city councilman, and Mayor O'Malley was the mayor. So this ceasefire program been in y'all's mix. Y'all been knowing about this ceasefire. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the question. Uh, very quickly, I, I did read your letter, and thank you for taking the time to read the letter, and I'll take a picture, which I'll, I'll get there. You keep telling me about that. This uh, handsome gentleman here uh, with the, the, the bald head is uh, Rodney Hill. He's an attorney who runs my internal affairs unit. Uh, he used to prosecute police officers, and I was able to talk him into coming over to investigate misconduct within the organization. He's very good at what he does. Uh, before we leave, we'll make contact with you, take your phone number down, your information, and he'll follow up and have the staff follow up and answer your questions. Next three questions. Can, what was oh, the sorry. case, the, the young lady, because we're taking oh, three at a time, uh, we were, we we're sharing, uh, and what was your name, ma'am? In, in, a, in a situation. So if he murdered him on March 31st, how is he back out locking somebody up on April the 13th, 2012? That's not even 14 days. I don't have the case uh, in front of me. I was uh, looking towards the, the internal affairs chief. What we do with uh, any, any incident that occurs within our organization, and we have, uh, in, uh, it was mentioned by Uncle George, we have an 80 point plan that any force from the force used from a deadly situation to using your fists, using your, using your hands, using your feet, using a baton, using a flashlight, losing, using any force whatsoever for us is investigated. And we, are, we go through a, a process and everybody's held to a standard. We do have to go through the police officer bill of rights. Officers, uh, just because allegations are brought up does not mean that they're guilty of everything. We have the responsibility not only to the citizens, but we have the responsibilities to the officers to go through a, a fair process. What I can do, and I can't provide it for you right now because I don't have the background and information, is go back and find out myself, and I will go back and find out myself to ensure and make sure what took place and find out the circumstances on that. If you give us our phone number, your information, I'd have my deputy commissioner tomorrow give you a call and follow up with you. Okay, make sure we get our information. Let's do it okay. now. Let's go over and get our information right now. Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is Ray Kelly. I'm the president and steward chair of the No Boundaries Coalition of Central West Baltimore. And on February 22nd, we had a community gathering where we discussed five issues, economic development, health and wellness, youth development and recreation, and public safety. The overwhelming problem with every group business owners as well as organizers as well as residents was they didn't, feel, they didn't get a sense of safety in certain parts. We encompass Bolton Hill, Reservoir Hill, Madison Park, Druid Heights, Upton, Sandtown, Winchester. The question's coming. Okay. My question is simple. How can we as residents and organizations ensure committed, committed support from the police department to come out and do programs and initiatives that bring positive visibility to our neighborhoods. I know, I, if I'm just gonna go out of order, yes, because I know that we said, said excuse me, that we we're gonna take three questions. That's what this is about, trying to get to that answer. You have to, let, you have to work with us, like you, you're here tonight, telling us what that looks like to you. you we can identify a, prob, you know, identify a problem that you said you don't feel safe, but 
then what do you, more importantly, what do you want to see from the police and how can we make that happen? Can I re uh -huh. Well, we, we are an organization that no matter what, we find a way to get things done. We still have our block parties and we still have organizational meetings. We also walk the neighborhoods, but in order for us to expand and have a broader influence, sometimes we need police support so we can go this way, so we can have a, a black party. That's, that and, is a longer conversation, and uh, Commissioner Bass is going to assign somebody to talk to you so we can figure out what that looks like and create that type of partnership. So the, the business leaders in your community who have invested over years in this community can have can feel the safety that they need so their businesses can thrive. So we'll make sure that we assign somebody to that this evening. Yes, ma'am. And also, I think I, I like to start that relationship with me. Sorry. And so if there is a meeting that you want to have and you want me out there, I like to come. And it's one thing to, to not just come, but to hear, to listen. I like to walk the neighborhood. But I also like to, uh, the Deputy Commissioner is going to touch bases with you. The Colonel is going to talk a little bit more about what he's been doing in that area because he controls the officers over there and what we'll do in the future. I would like to invite you right now to our mission. We got plenty of coalition partners and members here, and our meeting is the second Tuesday of every month at 6 o'clock p.m. at St. Peter Claver Church. My staff, my staff will give you uh, the, the, the number to my office. Just let me know. I don't have the ability to write that down. I'll let you come in and see. I will be in Just look right there in the face of the guy that you're talking to. That's your, that is your, your liaison in my mayor's office of and neighborhood. I, so I that's, work with our neighbors, so. Right, so that's... Inez will vouch for him. He's a good guy, right? Demetrius is a good guy. So he'll make sure. Don't leave. Do you have his card? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. I give All right. Got it. All right. Thank you, sir. Don't leave without connecting. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Brother John. I'm the president of the Dolphin Pool Association, the Holland Blossom Association, and I'm the president of Little Africa. Idea. We've been working and building this community for the last 19 years. Never got any support from Baltimore City. And the police, which we had some pretty nice police down there, Megavote, uh, Whitaker, uh, quite a few. Back when Ham was the commissioner, Ham would come down. And Ham would tell every community, do like Little Africa is doing. Idea. But the only interference we had from our community is with Baltimore City. Baltimore City for the last 40 years. We never got a nickel from um, Baltimore City. We don't know where the money went at, but we've been putting money in the community out of our own pockets. We don't have no crime, and nobody will not dare bring no drugs down in Little Africa. We'll deal with this ourselves. We don't need um, this police, you understand me? Because um, we deal with it, you understand me? So the whole idea, what I'm asking you, I have a lot of people, young people, old people, come to my office every day begging for jobs, jobs. So I use it, make some contacts, I, I teach them drywall and roofing the whole nine yards. So we send them out, they get a chance to get some work. I'll but write what I would like Mr. to meet John, with you, just for the sake of time, I'm sorry. I would like to meet with you, Ms. Mayor. All these communities that buoy it up, they're not no communities. Anywhere where it's black, you're going to have rats. The rats, what I'm talking about, I would love for you to come down to Little Africa. Only politician ever came down, it was Mosby. Mosby know what we do. What we do. That um, guy you got, what you call him, um, um, over there, um, uh, what's his name? Um, um, no, um, uh, um, what's his name? Um, cool. Never even been in the district. Would not come in the district. But he'll go up Reservoir Hill, Bolton Hill up in there but he would not come in that district. We got We're going to stick to the question, Mr. John, not so to cut Ms. you off. Mr. Johnson, Demetrius gave you your card so we can organize uh, first the outreach from my office and then a uh, visit from me. So he has, he has your card. You have his card so you, you can arrange call, it. You come down and say, call me. Let me know. Thank you, I'm, Mr. John. What I'm call telling me. you is you use... All this talk ain't doing them. Let's just match. Call me. Want to make a safe city? For the gun runners coming down, they want to bring us gun? guns? Sir, I'm, I'm, what I'm offering is to come down, and I'm giving you the contact person to make it happen. Thank you for coming out, sir. So, those of you who are standing in line. Call Mr. Demetrius, the card that you have, sir. Thank you. Okay, uh, my name is Carolyn Jennings. I'm an immediate past president of Windsor Hills. Um, I, we have a, a safety issue that's threefold and it's escalating. Our lights have been out for almost a month. When I drive up Lyndhurst, 
There's Lights Out right at Bateman Avenue and Lynnhurst. Two blocks of Lynnhurst, two blocks of Batesman Avenue. We've called uh, this 311 and expressed um, a request for the lights to come on. I've stopped the BGE people to find out what's going on. Now, we've called 311 and then I, I heard the mayor on TV talking about the, uh, the lights, the uh, temporary, temporary lights. lights. Yeah, the temporary lights. So we called 311 and they knew nothing about it. So we kept calling 311, got the supervisors double, their, their supervisors, they didn't know anything about it. So there's a disconnect. There's but a, then there's a happy let ending. Me just, let me just do this. Don't tell me the hap, a happy ending. I think Demetrius is your rep that is a liaison to my office. Yes, I want to make sure that you have a direct no, no, connection. Uh, well, if there's a happy ending tonight. No, 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 tonight, no, but I just want to make sure so that doesn't happen again. So yes, if, if, right, if, yes. you, if there's a disconnect, you can directly okay. call someone that works right. directly for me. So That's I'm sorry right. to interrupt, but I want, I don't, when you were saying it's a disconnect, I wanted to fix it immediately, right. so I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. that, that's fine. Right, but tonight, just before coming home, uh, we got word that we're going to get it, but I need you to make sure when. Oh, we need a date, because yeah, what's the, uh, it's very disconcerting. Both of us are what's the address again? It's very again? disconcerting driving up to your home and it's dark. What's, what's the, the address? Happening? What's the address? Okay. Now, the second thing that's escalating Give in us terms the address of real quick. Only one question, because we got a line. Well, this is a safety issue, sir, and it's chief over. Tell me, can you tell us the okay. address? I, I'm going to talk real fast. If you stop interrupting me, thank you. All right, uh, the other thing is because Can you of give that, us the address? I'm sorry. 3900 block of Batesman Avenue. 3900 and 4000 block of Baton Avenue. Thank right you. Right at that intersection in the 2600 and the 2700 block of Lynnhurst. Got it. And this is the ticket number if you want that too. We'll, we'll come I'll get it. I'll give it to him. You give it okay, to me. Okay, but the All other right. uh, the other thing is because of the darkness, we have a stray dog issue. We've been calling about the stray dogs for 6 months. Mm -hmm. They caught one dog, but they haven't caught the other. Now the other dog has now brought some friends around and behind a person's house and they are they are coming out and they are, um, are trying to attack people. There's a school around the corner and we have a lot of seniors in our neighborhood. And the seniors are now saying they're being attacked by these dogs. So for some reason, you gotta get a dog catcher or something, do something about that. And, and because of the issue, the darkness, we have two-legged people with their pants hanging down, roaming in our area. We need to get rid of them. So with the, if, if you could step over here, Mr. Larry, Larry Nunley can get the SR Thank numbers you. from Thank you, you and we can question. address it. And then Ma we're, Dean we're gonna Palmero. Your, uh, we're going to get a light right. tower up to your neighborhood. We're working on that now. It'll happen tonight. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Let's <laughs> get to the question. I'm getting, I'm getting it. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Christopher Jackson, and I'm part of Leaders of a Beautiful Struggle, and I think I'm the youngest person that's come up here today, so I feel like I should advocate and speak for the young people here. Um, there's an issue that I think that is systemic that all the, everyone is talking about that I think has to happen legislatively and not just haphazardly talk about issues, independently isolated issues. I think we need to talk about what, how to fix the issue, and my question has to deal with the Christopher Law, the Christopher Brown, about Christopher Brown, who was murdered by a strangulation of a Baltimore City police officer. I know it's an isolated case. In the current state legislation session, there, bill titled Christopher's Law, that seeks to transform the way police engage the, the public so that those deaths don't happen. Do you support this bill and other legislation that curbs police brutality? So I don't, I'm unfamiliar with it. We've talked a lot about the work that we're doing around police brutality. If you want to give uh, Demetrius the direct information and we can look into it. But we, I want to, I, I hear you and I'll look into it, but I want to try to get some of the people who are here from the Western District an opportunity. We've, 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 we've talked about this issue a lot this evening and I would hate not to have the people who are actually living in the district have an opportunity for their public safety forum to talk. Well, That's a, okay. is that, that was a uh, Baltimore County police uh, case that didn't happen in city, happened in a county. What is, the, what is the law very quickly? I know the mayor wants to move on. What is, what we're going to move law? on. You're going to give us okay. the information and we're going to follow up with you. And thank you for coming out to your public safety forum. First of all, I'd like to thank the mayor and the police department for coming together as a community. And this is a, it, this is a great start of starting a dialogue. Uh, my concern as it relates to public safety, uh, my name is uh, Bilal Ali. 
And um, I think that public safety is bigger than the mayor, the police commissioner, and the community. And I go to tons of community meetings, and it's a huge component that's always missing. And that's Mr. Greg Bernstein. And the police department can target the violent repeat offenders, but it seems like he's not sealing the deal. And I think it's unfair in some cases that the statistic winds up on Commissioner Bass' table had he been proactive of some of these people who were, who were arrested by the police department who came out and committed crimes that he didn't seal the deal. That's my question. I will say thank you for coming out and, con and expressing your concern. And I understand that the, the issue, just like we said, is bigger than me, it's bigger than uh, Commissioner Bass, it's bigger, but it's not bigger than all of us if we work together. And one of the things that, that I, I've done is increase investment in a federal prosecution. Because we know in far too many instances, people who are committing crimes out on our street don't fear uh, arrest. They don't fear, they don't fear the, our, our local judicial, judicial system. But when it's taken federally, it is, a, it is a real deterrent. So I invested so we can get more federal prosecutors and get them assigned to our most violent neighborhoods so we can uh, have a bigger impact when it comes to creating that deterrent. And it's out of the hands of a, a local court. shows up in the uh, moving forward if we're going to have a, a complete public safety issue. He needs to be invested in the community himself. He knew you was having this today. He should have came. I seen one of his representatives, but I never see him. We need to address questions to him. The commissioner and you uh, standing here taking all this heat, he needs to share in his responsibility too. And he's been I don't, Invisible. I don't disagree that we all have a, a role, but for me, this public safety forum was my opportunity as mayor to hear from you, the people I serve on how we can work together better to create a safer city. So I, I understand that a whole lot of other people who have a responsibility in that public safety arena, but uh, this was about the commissioner and I hearing directly from uh, the people that we serve on how we can work together better. And thank you for being a part of it. And Demetrius, before we go on to, ma'am, if you excuse me one second, before we go over to the next sure. question, Madam Mayor, we did, uh, because there were some folks who were just standing too long and asked that they would, uh, we would write their question. That is um, Mr. Johnson, who uh, posed a question, as did Mr. Abdul, uh, gave us a question. Is he still in the line? Do we know if he's, oh, he's okay. Uh, so Mr. Abdul, we're going to, uh, and Ms. Leela Campbell, Leela, you were actually the last in line when I spoke earlier. So there are a couple questions that we're going to get to that are written, but I'm going to ask that the young lady here at the mic, if you would go ahead and ask your question. I just wanted to emphasize that those of you who did take your seats, we do have your questions on hand. Uh, Ms. Tawanda, I know that you spoke earlier, and a lot, certainly a lot of members of your family and friends and sympathizers spoke, and if I'm correct, at least the first Five questions uh, were geared towards Mr. Tyrone West. Uh, excuse me, Tyrone West. So I'm going to ask to Ms. Campbell, who has a question about the police department meeting with the business community, community, and Mr. Abdul. Excuse me, Mr. Bilal, who actually already posed this question. If we can move forward with Ms. Campbell, we're going to move forward with you too, ma'am. But we want to respect everyone else's uh, time tonight. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Darlene Kane. I'm the president and founder of Mothers on the Move. I want to thank the mayor and Commissioner Betts and the police department for coming out. Um, I don't want to make this a personal issue because my son also was killed by Baltimore City Police, but I used to be a community organizer also. The question I want to ask you, and I was a community uh, organizer for Baltimore County uh, Police Department, have you found a way to develop a relationship with these guys on the street as far as coming into our communities, helping us, or Besides, like, coming up with a plan of what you want to do, have you, like, came with a relationship with them or asked them what they need? Or what well, they I like didn't hear it clearly. Did you say, uh, have I gone on the street and asked uh, people in the community what they need? The repeated offenders. I know you're going to have a closer. program for them. 
because you want to help the community to feel it, safer. Can I answer Have that? You, mm -hmm. yeah. So part of what this Operation Ceasefire does is exactly that. And that's not the only thing that we're doing. You know, in some of our communities, we've done very well with our safe streets model. And that's a, that is dealing with homicide and violence as a public health issue. And we're using individuals who have criminal records, who have been our violent repeat offenders, who have decided to change their life around. And they've been helpful, very, very helpful with us, with uh, communicating with the individuals who are perpetrating violence or, or becoming victims of violence on the street and trying to figure out together how to work their way out of that lifestyle. So we, we've been working uh, for years with that model, but to supplement that model is the, what the work that we're doing with Operation Ceasefire. It's a comprehensive approach. It's not just about prosecution. It's about giving people options and making it very clear that if you want to change your life around, we're willing to work with you. I, I hope that I'll be standing with members of the community who will say the same thing. If you want to change your life around, we're willing to work with you. But if you aren't, we're done. We're going to take our streets back, and if you want to continue your violence, you're going to be put away, and you're going to be put away for a long time. That's what this is about. The choice is theirs. So yes, we've been in communication. Yes, we will continue to be in communication. My goal is not to arrest everybody, that the, to have the police arrest everybody they see. The number of arrests continue to go down, even though I've been criticized for that too. We've tried to become a safer city by reducing the number of arrests because we figured it's better to target our resources on the people that are really committing the, 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 the uh, bulk of the violence. So we're, we're, this is a comprehensive approach, but it, it has to be supported by the community that has to say with a unified voice that enough is enough. Okay. Thank you for your question. Thank you. I would also like to thank Madam Mayor and other officials that came out tonight because this is where the process begins. My name is Abdul Salam, um, and I'm, uh, um, I have a president of an advocacy agency in Baltimore City. I work with the Department of Labor, also do therapeutic behavioral services and psychiatric rehabilitation in the community. I state these things because I was also beaten by Baltimore City Police with my three-year-old son two weeks prior to Tyrone West um, being brutally beaten to death. Two of the three officers that beat me were two of the 10 that beat Tyrone West to death. Yeah. My question is, and my concern is, and I state those things to say that I do take it personal, and I am here personally, as well as advocating for the community and for the youth um, that experience these things. Um, and my concern and my question is, um, Madam Mayor and officials, what are we doing to hold the repeat offenders of the department accountable? Because all the repeat offenders are not in the street. I wasn't doing anything criminal, I was beaten, um, and arrested. And with the, the line of work that I just stated, I can't take those type of charges and, and still proceed with my career. Um, what are we doing to hold these officers accountable and make it public record? Just as an individual, my record would be public if that would have held. They need to be held accountable. We need to know what they're doing, how many of these situations are happening, and how frequently. Because had those officers been held accountable, had they been taken off the streets, we might have another young man here today to advocate for the community. And I think that's very important that we, that we, that we make it a fair shake because I have witnesses from 8-year-old to 80-year-old witnessing this. And on camera, I have 8-year-olds saying, they're going to take them in the van and beat the, beat the crap out of them. Ain't nothing going to happen to them. And it's a shame that this is the mentality of an 8-year-old when the cops aren't being held accountable. Thank you, Mr. Salam. Mr. Salam, thank you very much for Salam. coming out. And um, I'm sorry you missed the question. That exact question has been asked and answered several times this evening. If you want to step over to the side, we can get you a direct answer. But we have spent a significant amount of time answering that specific question this evening. So I want to get to the other questions that haven't been asked. But if you step to the side, we'll get uh, uh, one of the officers to, to respond to you since you missed the answer. There thank you two, for coming out. There were two folks standing. Mr. Are you Kenny Ebram, by chance? Terry Holt, okay. And Ms. Leela Campbell. Oh, how Thank you feel today? Yes, sir. Well, Mayor, I voted for you and the commission. I was happy when you came from Oakland and stuff like that. And Mayor, what I ask you to do is think about Dr. King and him too. We got a black city and we got black officials, but now y'all not doing the same thing that Dr. King wanted y'all to do. I want you to look in your heart and make sure you do the proper thing and do what's best for Baltimore City, not best for the people that got money. You got to look in your heart 
You go to church, he go to church, look in your heart and do the righteous thing. And that's all we ask of you as citizens. You do the righteous thing, and then we can live with everything that happened, and that's all we ever ask. Thank so you, So thank sir. you for being, one second, sir. My, my heart, my feet, and everything else is here. And it's here because I want to hear from you. Now I could be, you know, you could be anywhere else tonight, and so could I. So I'm here to hear from you, and I think that is the righteous thing. We have to work in partnership. So I'm here to say to you and to everybody else, if there are ways that we can work together better to create a safer city, let's talk about it and let's do it. Demetrius, as I said earlier, excuse me one second, Leela. I'm sorry, there's how many microphones? One, two, right. three, four. Oh, he doesn't have one. Le Ms. Campbell, it's your turn. Yeah. As I said earlier, we're, you were gonna ask the last question. Okay. And we are now at 849. Yes. And I thank you for your question, Ms. Campbell, from a step forward organization. After you ask your question, we're going to hand it over to Madam Mayor, excuse me, the Commissioner, Madam Mayor, and then we will conclude with a few remarks. Thank you. Hi, Madam Mayor. Um, Leela Campbell, my husband Robert Campbell, we've been invested. We've been invested in the Harlem Park community for years. <clears throat> we employ over 16 people. We house over 42 men and women, women with children who are coming through treatment. Um, we serve uh, reentry services to over 75 men and women. That's what I do, you know, but we do have a drug dealing problem there and I have been tossed from one person to another in Western District. I've talked to the commissioner who has, I have a, a meeting with the Lieutenant Colonel McBride what? On okay, on Tuesday. Or oh, McBride, okay. you can call him McBride. He okay, can, he can I sing. Can, he knows who I'm talking about because I, you know. But I have a meeting with him on Tuesday. I just don't want to be tossed around any longer. And you so I'm going to ask mm -hmm. if you can have someone from your office to be there. That's Tuesday. I have some of my board members, my staff, again the lieutenant colonel, and we I will just have want a to get it done. My staff person there. Because and what I'm sorry I that you've been tossed is, around. Yeah, I want to go back to what I do. But I don't want, I mean, it's too, taking too long. It's taking too long to resolve a problem that, I mean, look, look at these guys. I don't think it should take that long. You're you know, right. You police, I'm sure you, but you can't keep tossing people or putting them on the back burner or, you know, making it seem like I'm the issue. And I'm not. I'm a partner with the community. You know, and that's how I want to be treated. I mean, you know, I invite you to come in again. I think if you have someone from your office, it'll be a smooth transition and we can get to the bottom of the issue so that we can do what we do. And that's serve and get people um, employed and, you know, serve men and women uh, who are in treatment. That's, you know, so I, I think. So that, again, thank you for being okay. here. Thank you for your patience so you could, get the, uh, you could get to your question. Thank you for working with the community. You're right, you shouldn't be tossed around. Uh, if you want a member of my team at the meeting when you meet with the police, we'll make sure that that happens. And I, I think we have a response from the police as well. I would never toss you around. I had an opportunity to meet you almost uh, two weeks ago when I came out to the Western and, and spoke to the group. And what you shared with me is that you wanted officers to come to your business and do sign, sign in and, and make a check. Um, and then I uh, think I believe it was Friday. I thank you for coming into the open house yes. You mentioned to me that uh, although officers came out there They didn't come out in the frequency that you like and what I immediately did is I gave you my lieutenant colonel His job and responsibility is that entire area. So you're not being bounced around I'm giving you the guys who are responsible to to get results So we're, we may we're, we are doing what you want. We may not be doing it with the frequency He will get it. He will get the problem solved for you. So this is Cliff McWhite he will solve it for you, along with Major uh, Robinson. Thank you, Commissioner Batts. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Demetrius. As I said, Ms. Campbell would be the last person speaking, asking a question. Uh, for minutes. those of you who would uh, ask, um, we were being respectful for those who, Demetrius, you can walk, you can finish with the mic. We want to be respectful for those who stood in the line for over 25 to 30 minutes to ask a question. Uh, and we were finishing up around 8.30, 8.35 was our time. Yes, sir, you want to say something, Commissioner? No, I, I was just going to close out. Oh, yes, sir. So I'm right. going to let the Commissioner go and do his closing remarks. And thank you, everyone, for your patience. You know, I really, on, on behalf of the police organization, I'd like to thank all of you come, for coming out. I, like, I appreciate the civility. One of the speakers said who came up who said that... Um, um, who came up who said that uh, you're taking heat up here tonight. 
I don't feel that this is heat. I enjoy coming out to the community, and more importantly, I enjoy listening to the community. What you're saying tonight are the things that are becoming an imperatives and the changes that we're going to make. This is the, this is the third city that, that I've been to that has a, a robust, rich cultural norm and, and has the opportunity to change itself. I came here, I'm at the stage of life for me. I get to go where I want to go and work where I want to work. I came here, number one, for the woman who leads, leads the city. She takes a lot of hits, and she didn't tell me to say this. She takes a lot of hits, and I sit down and I listen to her and I talk to her on a, re a regular basis. The reason I came here is because she cares about this city. She cares about it, she loves it, and she gives her heart to it. I'm here because I am committed to making a difference in this city. Now, I'm upsetting people. I'm taking on tough issues. I'm not backing down. I'm not backing away, nor am I running away. We are going to make a change. We are going to make a difference in this city. Just be with us, stand with us, and support us as we move forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and I again want to thank each and every one of you. Please, if you see somebody that works at Douglas on your way out, stop them and say thank you. Uh, they've been very gracious with their time this evening. I want to thank each and every one of you. I know we didn't get to all of your questions, but this is not the, the end. This is a continuing conversation, and it's a com conversation that we're going to need to have if we're going to be a safer city. So again, thank you all very much. God bless. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Have a safe night.